Hey guys, it's Star the Flippin' Hippo. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel at Flippin' Hippos. Today is November 19th. It is a Monday, which means it's time for what sold on eBay. So just like every week, we're going to take a couple of minutes first and talk about how sales are going for Keith and I. And then we're going to get into the highlights of our sales from the week, show you all, all of our best flips, all of our exciting flips, and a couple of items that I think might be helpful bolos for you guys while you're outsourcing. So, you guys know, I've been saying it for weeks, sales have been slow for us, especially considering it's Q4. When we got back from our business trip to Florida at the end of October, we, let's be frank, we weren't hustling as hard as we could have been, we weren't grinding as much as we could have been. We were just kind of hoping that our sales would increase with daily activity and uh, being back from vacation mode and kind of ride the coattails of Q4 and that didn't work. So we have to grind and we have to hustle and we have to put in a little bit more work to get our store back up to where we want it to be. We used to have over 2,500 listings at one point and we were down below 1,800. So uh, maybe Keith and I got too big for our britches. Maybe we were just doing so well for so long writing in at the above 0.5% sell through rate and just doing so great and our average sale price was raising. Um, maybe we got too big for our britches and I said that to Keith. I said, hey, I think we got too big for our britches. Um, that was one of my grandma's favorite expressions about people who kind of had a big head, I guess. So, you know, in the spirit of absolute honesty and transparency that I always try to have on this channel, um, our sales were slow, number one, because we went away and the store was on vacation and on five-day handling, but number two, because of our attitudes when we got back, the blah say, oh, it's Q4, things will sell, we can just keep going as we had been, and <laughs> that's not how it works. Uh, we were listing 10 things a day a piece, sometimes a little bit more. I, I do have a lot of other things to focus on, like this YouTube channel and Poshmark, but when your eBay sales don't bounce back after a vacation, you need to put in the extra effort to make it bounce back. And I want to see Q4 sales. So I had to be a big girl and take the blame. Um, it is what it is. So we need to get our listings up. We are now back at a solid 0.5% sell through rate, but I want to see more sales. And that means having more listings. There's, you know, so we're now trying to do 20 a day a piece. We're not being that hard on ourselves though. It's like the goal is 20 a day, but we have a lot on our plates and a lot of other things going on. So the overall goes 100 a week. So if it gets to be Saturday and I've only got like 90, I can do 10. If I only got 70, I can do 15 on Saturday and 15 on Sunday and still reach the 100 listings a week. And we will grow our numbers back up as far as how many listings we have. And if we hold solid at that 0.5% sell through rate or higher, We'll sell more items and we got to get back to where we were and this time remember <laughs> you gotta keep putting in the work if you want to stay where you're at i think we just got we got overwhelmed we had a lot going on between poshmark and ebay and youtube and some stuff in real life and it is what it is so you know um you know i'm not trying to complain i'm not trying to be whiny sales were bad and i know why they were bad and Look at me being an adult and I'm admitting it to the whole world. Um, so we, you know, I just wanted to make the announcement of the 100 listings a week per person. I think I mentioned it on my live show last night. But, uh, you know, you guys can hold me accountable to that. Um, I actually might start listing on Instagram every day how many listings I did that day. And then um, on the weekend, post when I hit my goal of 100 and be held a little bit more accountable. So, that being said, sales are increasing um, almost right away. Like, we started listing 20 a day a piece, like last Monday, and already throughout last week, sales increased, and this weekend was really good. So, I guess I wanted to put that out there for you guys, too. Sorry about my loud phone. Um, I wanted to put that out there for you guys, too. If you put the work in, it does pay off. When you put the work in, you will see results when you don't put the work in you don't see the results and if you ever get to a point where you're doing really really well don't pull back and think that you can just ride on relisting your unsolds every day or the fact that it's q4 you still got to put the time and effort in you may not have to put in as much but you still have to put it in and if you see that things are starting to slow down or not be as good then you gotta hustle again um but you do see the results when you put in the work 
So let's look at the sales from last weekend. Um, last weekend, not just this past one, but the weekend before was Veterans Day weekend. So you had four days of shipping going out on Tuesday and we had 28 sales total for four days. We were eight sales short of a solid 0.5 sell through rate. And we also had a lower amount of listings at that point than we did this past weekend. Um, but 28 sales for four days is really not that good. And I think that was the wake up call for us when we saw that for four days, we were only selling 28. We had to sit down and be real, be frank, figure out what the problem was and start to fix it. On Tuesday, we had eight going out and that was pretty good. Um, for, I'm sorry, that was Wednesday. On Wednesday, we had nine sales and eight went out and uh, we were still awaiting payment on one item there. On Thursday, we had eight packages, seven were eBay sales and one on Poshmark. On Friday, we had 10 packages go out. You can already see here on Friday, the payout from busting our, busting our butts all week Listing more, being more active, was already paying off within four days. We had 10 packages, three on Poshmark, seven on eBay. And look at this, guys. This is what went out today. Um, 28 packages. So you can see the difference. Last week on Tuesday for a four-day weekend, we had 28 sales. On a normal weekend, we had 28 sales. There you go. It pays off when you work. We had 21 eBay sales over the weekend. Seven of those were on Poshmark. And I have had to kind of reinvent the way I'm working on Poshmark and what I'm doing there to enable me to have a little bit of extra time to list 20 a day on eBay. And um, I may get into that in another video talking about Poshmark. But right now we're looking at what sold on eBay. So let's go take a look at the highlights of the week. Look at this. I just wanted to show this as like an example of things selling out of season. This is a mini short. I mean, it's a really short skirt. I think it was like um, 10 inches. So, I mean, it's a cool skirt. It's uh, destroyed, distressed. It's got this all these rips and tears. It's a mall brand. I got it for 99 cents. And it sold for $18 at a season. So that was kind of exciting. It also um, didn't weigh much, so it did ship first class. Uh, this sweater is another example of a mall brand that we would sell that we could pick up for $0.99. Cents. This one was new with tags, $0.99, cents, and it sold for $25. Here's another mall brand I'll pick up if it's new with tags for $0.99. Cents. Uh, these are Arizona Jean Company, Junior's Jeans, they're boot cut. They had a cute, um, like a, I don't, I don't know the cute's the word I'm looking for. They have a cool, like all over brown tint. Um, they were 99 cents, new tags. I took a best offer of 20 on them. Here's another mall brand. <laughs> these are Old Navy's men's jeans. They're like the slim skinny gray. These ones actually we didn't purchase for reselling. I had purchased these for my son and he didn't like them. He asked me for skinny jeans a couple Christmases ago and I, I did get the right size for him. I, I guess he just didn't like that they were gray or the way they fit. Um, he's a big fan of like Aeropostale and American Eagle jeans. So they kind of sat in his dresser for a couple of years. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, we cleaned out the boys' dresser and everything that they don't fit anymore were actually selling. And I took a best offer on these of 25. Um, there's actually a kind of funny story here if you read the description. So all the things we took out of the boys' dressers, um, I put into two piles to be washed and new with tags. And I'm telling you, like, the kid never wore these. He tried them on, never wore them. Um, and they went in the dresser for a couple years. And a couple of the things that were new with tags got mixed in with the stuff to be washed. And Keith didn't, he didn't go through it. Like he just took what I said to wash and dumped it in and washed it. And there were like four pairs of the jeans that he didn't like, my son didn't like, that were new with tags that went through the wash and the dryer and no longer had tags on them. So I listed them for a little bit less than I wanted to. And I just explained it that um, these were our jeans. They were never worn. The tags were removed and the jeans were actually washed. 
Um, and I didn't list them as I would have probably listed these at 30 if they had their tags or even 35. Um, you guys know I love to list high. But yeah, that's the funny story. I had two piles going um, as I was cleaning out the boys' dressers and closets. And my bad. I put four pairs of jeans or somehow they got mixed in with the other stuff. Keith washed them for me, blessed his heart, saved my back. But um, they just kind of all got dumped in together. But that's okay. I still got $25 for some jeans that had been sitting around for two years and nobody was going to wear. Right? And these Jennifer Lopez pants also sold. And they were um, $0.99. Cents. At the Goodwill and they sold for the $19 I had them up for they actually started at 20 and I relisted them I took 5% off usually when we relist off we drop the price by 5% and actually that night I got a message from the buyer asking me if I'd relisted these because she was watching them and no longer saw them you guys know when you relist if you do it as sell similar it creates a whole brand new unique um, item number for the item and treats it as a brand new listing and so she couldn't find them so I told her that we relisted them and pointed her in the direction and she bought them so that was cool these are cut from the cloth jeans size 14 these are the ones I found for a buck at the flea market in um, St. Augustine Florida with Casey and Sydney and they sold for I took a best offer of $25 I really liked these number one they were a buck um, but number two I really like the bell-bottom look I don't know if it's just because I'm an old fart <laughs> or I just like that style it is coming back in um, but I really liked like the really wide legs like that these were really nice jeans and these Braden jeans you guys may recognize from my haul video just last week on Tuesday. I showed you these and another pair of BKE men's jeans I picked up all day long. I list them at 50 and I get best offers of 45 and 40 both on eBay and Poshmark which I absolutely happily take. Um, I start at 50 because I know if I start at 50 I will get 45 or 40 on best offers. Um, I don't want to start any lower than 50 because I don't want to go lower than what I know I can get these for but I like to have best offer on my items um, so I did list these at 50 and they sold for 40 um, they were on this weekend sale the 25% off we do so they were actually 46.88 they offered me 35 I went down to 44 and then they offered 40 and everybody was happy um, but these were in the store for like a day and they sold so when I tell you that I source these BKE men's jeans for $6.99, I'm not crazy. <laughs> I will pay full price for these. Um, I doubt they would ever make it long enough at a Goodwill to be there on 99 cent day, but I do all day long. I will pay full price for these. I will put out there, and I know I've said this before, but I don't want anybody to go out and spend $7 on women's BKE because they don't sell as fast and they don't sell for as much money. It's the men's BKE buckle jeans with the names Braden, Derek, Seth. There's other ones that you can flip for that much. I will tell you that the women's BKE jeans, I'm lucky if I can get $20, $25 for them anymore. So don't pick those up unless you can find them for like a couple bucks or less. It's these men's jeans that um, are definitely worth paying up for. They move fast too. So even though I had seven invested in these, um, by the time they got listed in the store, they were only in there for like two days. All right, we're going to go into the plush now. I sold a ton of plush last week. I don't know what's going on. Tis the season. Thank you. I love it when all my plush starts moving. Um, plush is really, really long tail, probably more so than clothing. With the rare exceptions of super unique or really sought after plush. Here, let's flip through my bear so you can be looking while I talk. Um... Yeah, so with a few exceptions, you know, um, plush is really long tail, and it can take a while to move. So uh, when it starts to move, it's pretty exciting for me. The times I see the most plush shell is around this time of year, towards the end of November, all the way up through January, and then for some reason in August. I've never figured that one out, <laughs> but for some reason, like mid to end August, we sell a lot of plush. But yeah, they are really long tail and they can sit for a long time sometimes. 
um, this guy is a good example. Actually, this Aeropostal player has been around for about a year. Now, he did get unlisted at some point and sat in a death pile and then went back up. He's supposed to have a shirt with him. This is one Keith found for a buck um, at our, I think he got him at the local honey pot store last summer, like 2017 summer. Um, but yeah, he's supposed to have a shirt and stuff. So we just listed him like for 14 bucks because he's really lightweight. He weighed like 10 ounces or something and he was missing a shirt and we um, sold him for 13 12 this is a Logo Pets plus unicorn. If I remember correctly, this guy has been around for a long time too, guys. Probably uh, over a year. Um, it was another one that got unlisted and sat for a while and got put back in. This one was at a yard sale and I believe she just kind of threw it in. We were buying a ton of stuff from the woman and this was part of it. And she just kind of threw some stuff in for free because we were buying so much. Um, and this sold for $9.00. This is probably not a plush I would ever pick up again, to be honest. Um, but it was free. But you can see here it's supposed to have a zipper and be like a bag and it's broken. Um, but if someone were to give this to me for free, I'd take it again, sure. <laughs> uh, this Despicable Me Too Minion Elf came from the basket at my local Goodwill. Those of you that are new to the channel, there is a basket at my Goodwill where they put a ton of plush that they're trying to get rid of every weekend. They fill the basket full and I guess it's just plush that's been around or stuff they want to get rid of and they're 50 cents a piece. They used to be three for a dollar and then they marked them up to 50 cents a piece and longtime viewers I'm sorry you've probably heard this story about that basket like 10 times um but yeah this minion came from that basket back when they were three for a dollar so I paid 33 cents for him and um he's real cute he's like an elf of course he just sold it this time of year right I took a best offer for $10 um, because I knew I had only paid 33 cents for him and he didn't weigh anything to ship. Cheer Bears, Cheer Bear. This bear cost me a dollar at the Goodwill. Just kind of flip through, she's cute. She had some writing on her tush tag and um, the Care Bears here on her tushy heart are kind of worn off. So, um, hey, there's my type pen. Um, Back before I got fancy and started using black and purple pens. Um, sorry, diversion sidetrack. Um, she cost a dollar, and because she had that damage on her heart tushy, and she had the writing on her tag, I listed her kind of low. I listed her at 14. Or him. Is she rare him or her? Looks like a girl to me, but um, I accepted a best offer of 12 for this bear. This Care Bear sold within 12 hours of being listed. Like I listed him in the morning and I got a best offer in the, in the evening of 18 that I accepted in 12 hours. That is unheard of for plush. I mean, unheard of. 12 hour turnaround time is amazing. And yes, I took the $18 best offer. I was happy to be uh, sending him to his new forever home. That just goes to show you, um, get into those death piles guys because we all have them i'm not i'm not um i'm guilty i was gonna say i'm not um shy to tell you i had all that plush um i'm guilty too i had a lot of plush i still do i have hundreds of them in there that i'm just working my way through i've decided to set aside like an hour maybe two hours every saturday and just patiently work my way through the plush and just get the photos taken and then I can work on listing them throughout the week. But if you guys have an overwhelming death pile of something, try to do that. Try to dedicate like an hour on a Saturday or a Tuesday, whatever you can do, to just start photographing it. That's step one and then you can get it listed. Because this bear sold within 12 hours for $18 and it was just sitting. Like I had money just sitting around, right? Same with this guy. He was sitting around for a while and um, he was listed last week and he's already sold. He sold for the full um, $18 I had him listed for. He was, I believe, a dollar ninety-nine at Goodwill. I think he was in a recent haul video. And this one was um, 
around for a while. He was unlisted and sat in the death pile for a long time before I got him back up. Um, and I accepted, I accepted a, a $16.50 offer on him. He was like a dollar at the Goodwill, I think. It's been so long. Um, I don't know if I've ever told the story about the plushies, but we had a lot of um, plush that we were just kind of like redoing their locations and stuff, and we put them all in the drafts, and then our drafts all got deleted. So we lost like two, 200 listings of plush, and then they all just got kind of put in the death pile with all the ones I kept buying. And so we're still finding some of those older ones that I'm putting back in the store. Um, yeah, I told you I accepted $16.50 for him, right? Okay, so here's the phones we sold this week. This one we accepted a $15 offer on. This one was free. Uh, Keith bought a phone from a gentleman locally, and he just like threw this in. Um, he had no use for it. He said it was just sitting in a drawer. So basically, Keith got two phones for the price of one, although this one, you know, wasn't worth a lot. But when you don't pay for it, when someone just throws it in for free, hey, we sold it for 15 So uh, less fees. It's about 225 and shipping was probably three-something. So we'll say $5 fees and shipping. It was free. So we made 10 bucks on a phone that we didn't pay anything for that someone just threw in with another one. This Galaxy uh, went for a best offer, $65, and Keith paid 20 for it. And this is from the auction, if you hadn't heard already, and if you have heard the story 10 times, again, to my longtime viewers, I'm sorry. Keith bought an auction a while back. It had a bunch of phones in it in varying degrees of um, cosmetic damage and damage and sold them for parts are not working. This one sold for 110 was the best offer we took on it. So there you guys go. Tons of plush, a couple of phones, some mall brands, some new tag stuff. Um, but yeah, sales have definitely been getting better since we started listing more. And I really wanna put that out there to you guys because if you put the work in, you'll see the results. And I don't want anybody to be discouraged if your sales aren't what they should be for Q4. Maybe you need to do some hard thinking and some soul searching like we did. And maybe your sales aren't what they should be because you're not what you should be. Um, I know that a lot of people have said sales are slow lately. So I know that not all the fault lies on me and Keith, but there is something that you can do. And you can just list a couple extra listings a day. Just make sure you're listing every day and you're active. When you're outsourcing and you're out buying stuff, um, keep your eye out, especially this time of year, for stuff that's new with tags because people are buying for gifts, so they do like clothing that's new with tags more. And just keep an eye out for the better clothing. Um, try to cherry pick stuff that's going to sell for more. We still do our mall brands and our bread and butter brands only because of our business model and the fact that we have 99 cent days at Goodwill. So we will buy all the mall brands and all the bread and butter stuff for 99 cents a piece and build up our volume because we are a volume based business and we will build up how many listings we have based on you know that model. But we're still looking for the better stuff and always trying to raise our average sale price and always trying to source better. Um, those of you that watched my live show last night, I kept saying, you know, you always want to be better today than you were yesterday. So if yesterday you listed five things, list six today. If last weekend you sourced all bread and butter, well, maybe this weekend you need to dig a little harder and find something neat or something outside of your comfort zone. If you solely sell clothes, go look in the um, mugs and see if there's any Starbucks there for you. Go look through the electronics, see what you can find. Um, if you don't sell clothes, take a walk through the clothing aisle, see what you can find. Um, we found, a, well, I'll do a deal my haul video tomorrow, but we found some amazing stuff this weekend um, outside of our comfort zone and in our comfort zone. So yeah, just keep your eyes peeled. Um, maybe try sourcing at a different thrift store or if your weather isn't like ours and there's still yard sales and church sales and stuff, you can go to those. You can do um, Craigslist ads. You can do Facebook Marketplace. Just always be doing something different and something better every day than you did yesterday. And you'll constantly improve not only your business, but yourself. 
Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know how sales are going for you. Did you guys have any super exciting flips this week? I love to hear it. Let me know. Do me a favor and smash the like button before you leave. And if you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to our channel and help us feed Hungry Hippo. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, you guys have a good night.